if you're having to press a string all the way down to the fret, and what happens when you bend a string? The pitch goes up. So before you, you can tune at the open note, and then stretch the string out of tune by the time it gets to the fret, and you're always going to be out of tune whenever you're fretting. So it's important to have the string height at the nut as low as possible. And the way to check that is, if you're playing at the first fret and it's not buzzing, you can assume that the height is okay at the second fret and the first fret. So then just fret at the second fret and check the height over top of the first fret. And it should be minimal. It should be essentially less than a business card. And um, if you find that you're playing cleanly at the first fret, but it's buzzing at the open, then your nut is too low. And it's a, it's, a, it's a consumable item. It's designed to wear out. You'll have to take it to a luthier, and they'll, they'll either pop it out and shim it, or put a whole new nut in for you. So, truss rod, then nut. Now you can move on to action. Now, with modern bridges, most of them are set and forget. Once you set your action, you can lock it in place and, and you never have to do it, you never have to touch it again. Um, the only thing that can happen is if those locks aren't tight, the saddles can start to rattle down a little bit. And the way you'll notice that is if you hold, this, hold the base at an angle and just sight across the strings, just very carefully. What you should see is you should see because the, um, there's a curvature to the, the setup of the bridge to match the fingerboard. You should see the strings having an even arc across the top of them. If you see one string standing higher or lower, then that's an indication that you need to adjust that up or down. Um, you want the action to be as even as possible. It's going to gradually progress from very close to the fingerboard to between the 12th and the 24th fret, about the same height. Uh, the 12th would be uh, roughly the same height as the 24th. Um, that's normal. What you don't want to have happen is you don't want to have so much um, relief in the neck that the 12th fret has a higher action than the 24th because you need that room for the string to move. This is something that, if you don't feel comfortable with tools, don't worry about taking to a luthier or having a luthier adjust it. It's just important for you to know that, that um, if you're getting buzzing in this area, it's not a truss rod adjustment, it is an action adjustment. Now, pickup height is something that, uh, I prefer pickups closer to the strings. Um, other people on my team prefer them further away. It's, it's a personal taste thing, but you'll know if you're too high because you'll start getting marks on the, on the uh, pickup top. So to have the, the uh, string actually slapping the top of the pickup, it's not a good thing. It's not gonna, it's not gonna destroy the pickup, but eventually it's going to wear the top down and you're also going to be choking the string every time it hits that pickup. Having them too far away though increases your, your signal to noise ratio. There's always going to be a certain amount of noise in the pickup even if they're hum cancelling. Um, but the closer to the string it is, the more you're going to adjust that relationship where you have more signal and it compared to the noise. So as high as possible without hitting the top and the way you can check is just fret at the very last fret, and you should have about two to three millimeters on the G-string of clearance when, when you're fretting on the uh, G-string, and um, about that much or double that much on the uh, lower string. And then set your EQ flat, play through your amp. Play the G-string, play the B-string. Do they have relatively the same volume? Um, that's great. If the B-string is too loud, then you can lower that into the pickup that takes it further away from the string and it reduces the volume of just the bass strings. Um, if you find that the G string is, is um, not loud enough, you can raise it a little bit. The one thing to watch for though, is that the magnets, the closer they are to the string, the more the flux field starts to grab onto the string and, and hold onto it in midair. And what you'll hear is you'll hear almost like um, a, a timpani, um, or sorry, a steel drum where the harmonics start to warble. And you'll notice that from the 12th fret up. And the higher up you go, the more it'll start to, to sound like it's distorting and it's warbling. Um, lastly is uh, intonation. Now before you set your intonation, you might as well have a fresh set of strings because as you're playing the strings, where you play, you're gonna leave oil and that oil is gonna affect, or it's gonna attract dust and dirt 
um, skin is going to slough off from your fingers and it's going to pack up all those windings with, with all this um, material that shouldn't be there. Where you don't play, it's going to be fresh. And so your string is, is going to be heavier where you play it, less heavy where you don't play it, and that's going to affect how it vibrates and it's going to throw your intonation off. So the best way to set your intonation or have your intonation set is with a fresh set of strings. Bass strings are expensive, so there's one thing that you can do to try and clean them off, and that's detune your bass by about four turns, get yourself a paper towel underneath the strings, and then I'm going to turn down the bass and just snap it. all the way along, and what that does is it shakes off as much dirt as possible. You'd be amazed at how you can take a, a set of strings that sound like rubber bands and all of a sudden they sound almost brand new just by shaking off that dirt. Um, lastly, I'm just going to talk about series and part wall settings. Now, when you, uh, when you hook up two pickups, you can hook them either end to end, as in one wire goes through the pickup it's connected to the, the next pickup and then out. That would be series. Or you can hook them up in parallel where you put both ends of the pickup together and wire one to ground and one to hot. Most bases are wired so that they're in parallel. And what that does is it gives you kind of a mid tone, which is great. Um, that would be a typical Fender Jazz. The other way to hook them up is series, so end to end. And what that does is it sounds more like a Gibson, more like a mid-center um, mid tone. And uh, I'm just going to get Kristen to play, and I'm going to go back and forth between series and parallel. So in parallel, it'll be more scoopy, and in series, it'll be more Bases come with a switch that allows you to just dial it in and apply it. 